live from WTVO Rockford and your home team. Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. The man accused of causing the death of an East High School student is back in Winnebago County. A change in the case will cost him less to get out of jail. Rockford Elementary School kids will keep warm this winter. A couple of Rockford area retirement communities make it happen. Teddy bears tossed under the ice during a weekend ice hogs game go to good homes. The gifts brighten the season for local kids. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. The man charged in the death of a 16-year-old East High School student sits in a state line jail tonight, but it won't cost him much to bond out. Amory Wilder has been looking into this case. Amory, the driver's bond was lowered. That's right, Mimi and Eric. Diari Steele's bond was lowered significantly. I talked to someone with the state's attorney's office, and while they can't speak on the details of the case, they tell me the judge has a lot of discretion over bonds. Lowering the bond for somebody who's been on the run, why would you do that? Gretchen Beeman is a family friend of the Haydas who lost their son Mason back in August of 2021 in a car crash. Diari Steele is accused of hitting Mason in that crash while driving under the influence. Court documents also show Steele was driving nearly 60 miles above the speed limit before the accident near 24th Street. He was found last week in Detroit, more than a year later. Mason was declared dead at the scene. And the police in Rockford did their job. It, they had to take the chips out of both cars. They had to get video surveillance from the scene. They took eyewitness testimony. They dotted their I's, they crossed their T's. They did everything they were supposed to do in investigating this accident. She's not happy that with the reduced bond, Steele just needs $50,000 to be released. Ken LaRue with the state's attorney's office says the judge looks at many factors when deciding a bond, including a risk assessment. Normally, uh, uh, the bond court judge would just normally defer to the uh, judge who, where the case is assigned. But if it comes in front of a bond court judge and they see that uh, there's been some uh, factors that were not previously incorporated into the decision to um, set bond. The judge has the discretion to be able to change bond. Beeman doesn't understand the judge's decision. She says a life is something you can't get back. Mr. Steele made several bad decisions that day that cost a family their son's life. Mason did not do anything wrong. His life was horrifically taken. And justice needs to be served. LaRue adds that the law will change on January 1st due to the Safety Act. Eric? Thanks, Amory. Several people are hurt after a crash Wednesday night. First responders were called to Woodstock Road near the Boone County and McHenry County line around 8. They found three vehicles, including a box truck, with serious damage. People were trapped. Four of them were taken to the hospital. No word on how badly those people were hurt. Investigators haven't released any information about what caused the accident. No one is hurt after an early morning fire in Roscoe. Fire crews were called to Joan Drive near the Hananiga Forest Preserve around 2 a.m. When they arrived, they found flames coming from the garage that were quickly spreading to the house. All three people in the home got out safely. Firefighters rescued a family dog from the basement. The fire was brought under control within 20 minutes. Damage to the home is extensive. The Red Cross is helping assist the family. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Two state line retirement centers give back to a Rockford school. Kids at Conklin Elementary got cold weather kits. Each kit contains a hat and a pair of gloves. Over the past month, employees from Wesley Willows and Peterson Meadows gathered money to buy the clothing. They collected more than $600. Wesley Willows administrators say they look at the school and the kids there as neighbors. But we want to give back. We um, find that this time of the year is a nice time to give back to the community. And so uh, being local, we're just down the road. So this is a great partnership that we have to um, see the need to provide hats and gloves, especially on a day today when the snow just came. So it's a nice opportunity to give back to the community. The donations become an annual tradition for Wesley Willows and Peterson Meadows. 
Sports fans score with an annual tradition that brought in hundreds of stuffed animals for kids. This comes after the Ice Hogs' famous teddy bear toss last weekend. The players delivered the teddy bears this afternoon. 700 were given to the YWCA. The nonprofits donating the stuffed animals to local first responders and child care centers around the state line. The Winnebago County Sheriff's Office will also receive some of the bears. The CEO for the YWCA says she's glad the community gives back. Really exciting to see the community dig into this sort of thing. And I mean, there's people that save up bags and bags of these games, of these animals, and they come to the game and share them. And it's just such a special feeling knowing that they're really reaching out and trying to help the, the kids in our community who need an extra hand, especially at Christmas. Almost 5,000 teddy bears were collected at the game. Those bears were given to other state line organizations. Illinois lawmakers hold a second hearing on gun violence as they consider gun safety legislation. Coming up, we break down the numbers since the last assault weapons ban. The scattered snow showers we've had kind of on and off throughout the day today. Those will continue and pick right back up tomorrow. We'll look at how much that could add up to all coming up in your most trusted forecast a little later. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Lever, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. State lawmakers heard from gun violence prevention experts in the second hearing on the assault weapons ban bill. The proposal would ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines in Illinois for most people. From 1994 to 2004, the federal government had a ban in place. During that decade, according to state data, gun violence connected to those weapons went down 40%. Since then, the executive director of the Illinois Criminal Justice Information Authority says the number of mass shooting deaths skyrocketed by 500 percent. Research has shown that bans on these lethal weapons are associated with significant reductions in the rate of fatal mass shooting incidents and victims killed. When assault weapons are used, they have an outsized impact on injury and death. Opponents argue this only targets legal gun owners and people using guns to commit crimes which is bring guns from other states. The bill tries to account for this. If passed, Illinois State Police would have to ramp up patrols on state highways to prevent gun trafficking. Snow's been falling for most of the day here in the state line. When we come back, Candace tells us how much we can expect this evening. That's coming up next. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, good evening. Welcome back. We are live here at Cinnissippi Park for the Festival of Lights. The lights turned on here, oh, I'd say about 25 minutes ago, and we've had a steady pace of cars that have come through here uh, so far this evening. This will run through tonight until 11 o'clock from 5 to 11, both Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then the next week, the week of Christmas, the lights are on Monday through Friday from 5 to 11. And then Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, that Saturday and Sunday, it is open 24 hours for you and your family to come out and enjoy. And we've been doing something special here both tonight and next Thursday. Meteorologist Jordan Wolf will be out here next Thursday. But for the first 100, 150 cars coming through, you will receive an eyewitness news and comfort first insulation holiday ornament. Just a little token to say thank you and happy holidays for you guys to enjoy. So uh, we've got a little bit of time here. I will say the ornaments are going very fast though as we've had that steady line of cars come through. A good night to enjoy and feeling kind of festive too with the lights. Beautiful displays uh, right down through. You can see the cars as they go through and enjoy and some of the work that has gone into some of these displays just uh, absolutely gorgeous. I know it gets bigger and better each and every year and of course you can't forget the uh, big tunnel that you go 
go through the 100-foot light tunnel there at the beginning of the uh, light display. So if you've got some time, come on out and enjoy. Again, it goes until 11 o'clock here this evening, and then we'll start back up tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. As I mentioned, the festive kind of nature with some of the snow showers, we've had some persistent light snow for the most part. Now, I do know there's been some heavier bursts of snow that have come down kind of throughout the afternoon, but we're starting to see some of that begin to taper off. There's been kind of a light flurry activity here throughout much of this evening, and that will continue as we go through the rest of tonight. There's some additional snow showers back off to the west, and with this large low pressure system across the Midwest and the Great Lakes, that colder air coming in, you build up a little instability, and that's where you get some of those snow showers moving in. Now, I will say, while the roads are mostly wet, black ice is a possibility just as those temperatures drop back. And when we do see some of those heavier bursts of snow, we did have visibility that fell to just under a couple miles in a few spots. So later tonight into tomorrow morning, that may be an issue for the morning commute there. Could be some icy spots, bridges, overpasses. Those will be the first to ice up. So just be careful if you are heading out tomorrow morning. An improvement in visibility, not necessarily in Rockford, still down to about a mile and a half there at the airport. DeKalb down to 1.7 miles, but it is coming up back off to the west as some of those snow showers have kind of tapered off here for us this evening. We take you live over the Jefferson Street Bridge. This is our Supply Corps camera over downtown Rockford here, brought to us by Window World. It'd be nice to get some sunshine. I'll tell you, these next couple of days, not going to get much of it. Maybe on Sunday. I think Sunday's our best day to get uh, some sunshine sunshine after over a week of cloudy skies and now closing in on two weeks of at least mostly cloudy to cloudy skies. So snow showers at times, a little breezy out there this evening. Temperatures will drop into the mid-20s. We made it into the 30s today, but tomorrow not going to be as warm. We'll stay in those upper 20s to right around that 30 degree mark despite that southwest wind. So while some of these snow showers taper off to a few flurries here this evening, we'll see that kind of pick back up once we get into mid to late morning and then going into tomorrow afternoon. So tomorrow is going to be almost a carbon copy of what we had out there today, just a drop in the temperature. By Saturday, the wind will turn more to the northwest and that'll filter in a colder air mass going into the weekend. Highs through the weekend are expected to stay in the 20s and we get even colder, unfortunately, going into next week. Temperature tomorrow right around that 30 degree mark, but the chill will be there most definitely with that wind that comes in from the southwest at about 25 miles per hour. So over the course of the next couple of days, between today, tonight, Friday, and Saturday, we could pick up another inch or two uh, going into the weekend. So it's not a lot, but we'll see some more of that snow kind of stick. And it will stick because our temperatures are then expected to drop down Highs next week could stay in the teens. 31 our temperature in Rockford, Freeport, 31 in Rochelle. You're at 30 degrees in Sterling. Notice those temperatures, the wind chill numbers in the teens and the 20s as our southwest wind sits at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. 24 on Sunday, 25 on Monday. Another chance for some snow showers Monday then into Tuesday. And then again Wednesday into Thursday. Both those times we could see some accumulation with that. And that would carry us over along with the cold guys going into the holiday week. Weekend. So bottom line, it gets a lot colder before it gets any better. So a good time to kind of stay inside. And of course, we'll be watching the weather too for any holiday travel. Uh, if that forecast kind of pans out, may get a little messy for some, especially doing some traveling right before the uh, Christmas holiday. Eric and Mimi. Yeah, those teens are a tad too close to Christmas Did weekend. you see that big goose egg up there? Yeah, I did see it. <laughs> Tried to, my, my brain, I think, shut it out, but yeah, it's there. Yikes. Thanks, Candace. Reagan's in next with sports. Fred Van Vliet carded one of his best performances of the season last night. We'll hear from the Auburn High School graduate coming up. Now sports with Reagan Holgate. The Raptors are in a down year and they're looking for big contributions from Fred Van Vliet and we finally saw it last night. He ended the night with 39 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists and 4 steals in their 1 point loss to the Kings. He carded one of his best performances this campaign but for the Rockford native it doesn't matter when you can't grab the win. I mean, it's just frustrating to lose in general. Um, you know, individual performances don't really matter, um, especially when you don't get the win. So, um, 
you know. Frustrating for sure. There were some positives, obviously, tonight, but it um, doesn't really matter when you don't get the win. Some good news for the Bears. Justin Fields was a full participant in practice today and is expected to play Sunday, as were Jaquan Brisker and Kyler Gordon, who are coming off of concussion protocol. With Fields back now, it gives the defense a chance to practice against him, which Matt Eberflus feels will help prepare them for an MVP candidate like Jalen Hurts. I see it as a benefit. You know, to be able to play against somebody like Justin, you know, he's such a dynamic player, you know, and, and so is Jalen. You know, both guys are, are guys that can get into the open space, you know, can break a pocket down if the, if the coverage is, is tight and then run with the football to create first downs. So, you know, going against our guys certainly is going to benefit us. Now, the Packers are in a different position than the Bears, who've been eliminated from playoff contention. But the margin for error keeps getting slimmer. Not only do they have to win out, but there are other scenarios with Washington, New York, and Seattle that will also play a part. But these players know that they can only control what happens on Monday with the Rams. In years past, we knew they were going to make the playoffs at least, worst case scenario. Now we have to win these next four and then let the rest do itself um, for us to be able to make it in there. So um, a little bit of a different scenario, but at the end of the day, we just got to come in and do our work. Going out there and getting that last win, I think anytime you can get a win, it gives you a lot of momentum. And, you know, I think that win couldn't have come at a better time, getting the win right before bye. And the Chicago Blackhawks have been in a downward spiral since the start of the season. They have another chance tonight to try and right the ship as they host the Golden Knights. Puck drop is set for 7.30. That's sports. We'll be right back. Candace will have another check of weather in just a moment. First, here's what Chris Cuomo has planned for later on News Nation. Tonight, a special edition of the show. More and more of America's children are transitioning at an early age. I started medically transitioning at 16. For some, it's a lifesaver. I don't have any regrets. It improved my mental health. But for others... It was the biggest mistake of my life. How young is too young to make a life-altering decision? I'm worried they're not doing a proper evaluation. Some doctors are blowing the whistle. This is the most serious abandonment of scientific principles that I have seen. Who do we need to listen to tonight? That's all coming up later on the cable and satellite stations you see here. You can also head to newsnation.com. Our first WARN interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. We've got a couple of scattered snow showers that will continue tapering off to more flurries. Some of the snow here uh, in Rockford is really kind of tapered off moving to the east, but we'll see those flurries on and off as we go through the night. And then the scattered snow showers, they will continue into the day on Friday. 20s going into the weekend, colder next week. All right. Thanks, Candace. And thank you for spending some of your time with us. Stay safe.